Welcome everyone to the Bama Boys Podcast episode 5, I believe. We're here, and it may be the last podcast of 2028. So, enjoy. <laughs> what do you think, Must? Oh, uh, man. Well, I think it'll be a nasty one tomorrow, but I may be proven wrong. Uh, I'm going to cast my ballot. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I think we're fighting for America. We really are because, like I told people at my work this morning, I said, they won't be another Republican Party, right-wing party, nothing. nothing, It'll be one party rules all. And if she wins it. So uh, I encourage people to get out there and vote tomorrow. So, Well... We do realize that this is going to come down to about probably a thousand people in either Michigan or Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, I mean, the unless, I'm telling you, this thing, I told somebody this earlier today. I said, this election can go one of three ways. We won't know till Friday or Saturday. Number two... We'll know the night of because they they can call it in these swing states. Or three, Trump wins in a landslide, which probably won't happen, but that's my hope. Well, I just want it to be known. We got breaking news. The United States Supreme Court has stepped in and allowed Virginia to remove non-citizens from its voting rolls. So, oh. that's just breaking out now. Finally stepping up to the plate. I, I think people this time around, you know, Trump's had a lawsuit in Pennsylvania that he won. He had a lawsuit in Georgia that he won today. Um, and if that if he's winning these lawsuits, you know the cheat's in play. In some form or fashion, so. Well... Like he's too big to rig. Too big to rig. I mean, here's our thing. And Trump really good for saying this. And promoting it. Get out and vote. We need to make it so they can't rig it. It's too big to rig. Too many votes for him. And CNN, a couple weeks ago, of course, it doesn't matter about your popular vote. Um, And we know that from history. Um... But CNN was preparing their viewers a few weeks ago. Now, uh, guys, uh, it, it could be a possibility that Trump wins the popular vote this time. And I'll tell you, if Trump wins the presidency, if he wins the popular vote in Electoral College, both of them, wins it all, he can thank a few people. He can thank his son, Baron who, had, from what I've learned in the past couple of weeks, he's responsible for Trump going on all these podcasts. Going on Rogan, going on Dr. Phil, going on, uh, what's that one guy's name you like that's a comedian? Uh, um, uh, Theo. Uh, Theo Vaughn. Yeah, going on that podcast. Uh, really branching out and going on these podcasts. Podcasts are the new radio. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it won, you know, it won presidency for FDR back in the day, radio. So, you know, podcasts could win Trump the, the vote this time, I think. Well, I'm, I agree, you know, he's being a lot smarter this time around. Um, I have heard and i don't know how true it is that in pennsylvania that a lot of the mail-in ballots that got mailed in were majority democrat but they were less votes for democrats and then 2020 yeah so that means to me that shows to me that come tomorrow when people get out there and actually start voting we may outvote them well and uh, pennsylvania we talked about this I think Sunday, uh, yesterday, I think it, about yeah. uh, Pennsylvania and the Amish. 
Oh, yeah. That's yeah. unprecedented. I mean, you got people, the Amish, coming out to vote for Trump. And that could win him Pennsylvania, from what I have been told. So It's against their even culture to even do something like that. And so... And that needs to tell you what what we're going up against, and and you know I'm not gonna sit up here and say Trump don't have his faults. He's real gun ho, you know. He's got his fault, and like people like to say, he's the lesser of two evils. But I mean, at this point, Kamala Harris is not. I would. She's worse than evil. Mm-hmm. She will have us. I'm telling you, I kid you not. Like I told somebody today, she will have us. It it will not become an American dream. It'll be an American nightmare. She'll you you won't see her. You only see Tim Walls running the show. And <laughs> I mean, cause D Rod, did you see Kamala Harris the last three years? I probably saw her five times in three years. I've saw her more campaigning now than I have when she was vice president. And what I mean, what's her track record? Let's look at it for a I second. Don't see okay. Her record. I don't uh, see border, it. border, border control. She was border czar. I don't care what anybody says. There's evidence, video, news networks, whatever you want to do. She Biden appointed her border czar. Well, we saw how that went. Well, the border okay, is, she, border secure. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> th- now it is after it became a problem. Um, no, and then, and, either. and then you, she was over Ukraine. Uh, we see how that went. That went real left. Okay. Um, uh, those are really the only two accomplishments, and I wouldn't call those accomplishments. I'd call them disappointments, in my opinion. But, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about her than she has no track record. She's the cackling president, and she will not be. Do I, It's like I tell any Democrat that wants to vote for her, do you honestly see her going to talking to these world leaders who, mind you, don't respect women? These are dictators. Mm-hmm. Um, these are people who have red buttons. I mean, all the only thing that Biden did, oh, I'm going to sanction Russia, a oh, whoop de crap and do, that did. I mean, <laughs> no. We need somebody who's gun-ho, who shoots from the crap and hip to get the world back in check. You have North Korea over here fighting in Ukraine and China giving them food and ammunition. That's the Axis powers, D-Rod, back again. <laughs> I uh... mean... It, it, it's it's the blind leading the blind, and people. Well, I want my rights. I want my abortion rights. Nobody is taking your rights. Trump is not taking your gay rights, your abortion rights. That is up to the states. It has been, and it always will be. Sounds- Even in this state of Alabama, if a wife, if a woman's life is threatened by the baby, they will they will give you an abortion. They'll either C-section or whatever. No one's killing you. No one's uh, taking away your abortion rights. Well, it sounds my, like uh, you've been festered up by somebody here lately. I don't know. I, I, I'm just <laughs> sick and tired of the BS. I mean, it's time we get start getting the brass tacks. Is this a country worth fighting for? I got news for you. If Kamala Harris wins and she puts us in a war, they best not come to my house getting drafted because I won't go. <laughs> I won't go. Well. So. Here's my I'll thing. fight a war here. Well, here's my thing. and uh, Yeah, you know, a lot of people who listen to this know me. You know, you know me. Um, here's what I'm going to say about tomorrow. And Trump, really, he should have been honing into this the whole time. But he really just done it a couple hours ago, and yesterday I think they actually released the actual video. But it didn't go up on his socials and everything until today, about two hours ago. Um, it's a new ad, his last ad before tomorrow morning voting. And uh, it's him, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Robert Kennedy, Nicole Shanahan, Vivek Ramaswamy, J.D. Vance, and Elon Musk. And they're all making their statements. That's a powerhouse team. That's what I'm voting for tomorrow. I'm voting for that team. Trump has already stated that all of them are going to have a place in his administration. Already funding it himself. 
That's what I'm voting for tomorrow. I'm not necessarily voting for Donald Trump tomorrow. I'm voting for that team, whatever you want to call them, Bulldog, MAGA, Avengers, whatever. It's one of the best teams I've ever seen, one of the best group of people I've ever seen come together for a political race. And it could change the country. It could change the world. And those are people who tell you like it is. And yep. um, if she wins, you'll have the same cabinet who's done nothing the past four years. Mm-hmm. Except for, I guess, most recently, go after a pet squirrel. Yeah, yeah. And then I recently found out today that they cut its head off so they could test it for rabies. Um, uh, uh, pretty devastating. Uh, most people know Peanut the Squirrel from TikTok, very famous. Uh, uh, a liberal white woman who's very caring, S. Trump, I mean, uh, Harris supporter out of Texas, gave him a call. She has now deleted all her socials. Um, and to me, it's like, yeah, it was a squirrel at the end of the day. I ate one last week. But at the end of the day, that was an overreach of government. And that's what I fight against. I cannot stand when the government overreaches their hand. We pay their bills, people. And yes, we have laws in place. But when we've got illegal immigrants out here killing women, doing other stuff to women, uh, killing kids, running them over, doing all kinds of junk, but we're too busy worrying about what some guys have in his house as a pet. Well, I, I, it's an overreach of government. And it won't be animals when she gets elected. It'll be crapping people. You start staying, standing up during the Harris regime. Uh, I got news for you. You're going to get drug out of your house. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go that extreme yet, but I it just, will I be just bad. I have a feeling. I got a feeling. No, I'm not going to go that far yet, but it will be bad. No doubt. They will be a persecution. Well, I, yeah, I have I a mean, feeling. I mean, we've already seen that she's not going to stand up for Christians. We saw that at a rally. Yep. You know, Jesus is Lord. Well, you're at the wrong rally down the streets where you belong. And then proceeds to go to a church the following day. Well, okay. I mean, J.D. If Vance that, handled that well. Somebody stood up the next day when he was talking. Jesus is king. Yes, he is. Jesus is king. That's how you handle that. That's a true person. That's somebody who's got and, morals. You know, we, uh, we got on the topic today. I told a young lady I work with. I told her, I said, uh, you know, she said, well, uh, you, your faith has nothing, needs to be nowhere near politics. I said, where's that in the Constitution? <laughs> I said, and D-Rod, you're a history major. You know dang well all the founding fathers were all Christians. Well, yeah, they don't want to tell you it's in, it, It's in the Constitution itself. In God, we trust. Well, see, that's, that's, I mean, that's deleted history now. So. Yeah, well, whatever. They can they can try to delete it, uh, erase it, whatever they want. But this country was founded on morals, and we have lost those morals. It was faith-based morals, right and wrong. But now, wrong is right, and right is wrong. You get what I'm saying? Well, welcome to America. Yeah, well, it's, it won't be America for too long. She uh, wins. But what I was saying earlier about podcasts, FDR done something similar. When he was running, he done the fireside chats on radio. And I think Trump, if he wins, you know, the fireside podcast. Because Trump, he's going to do what he wants to on these rallies. Trump's going to be Trump. He's going to go up there and say a few out-of-range things. And who knows what all he's going to say. But when he's on his podcast, and I've watched uh, most of them. He's on point. He's saying what he's going to do. He's telling people what he's going to do when he gets in office. Drill, baby, drill. And even on Dave Ramsey, he told Dave, he said, listen, if I get elected, it's going to take a year before things start leveling out. Because it's going to take a year for him to get everything fixed that was ruined with the economy. And, you know, a lot of Trump voters, they'll say, well, you know, It'll get fixed in a few weeks after he gets elected. No, it'll take longer than that. Um, 
but he's got the team this time to do something big. Like I he's told got you. the backing. He's got the team this time. He was told who to pick last time because that's just how it went, he thought. This time he's funding it himself and picking who he wants to. And we see that with Vivek and Tulsi and RFK and Elon. That That's a dream team, man. And, and, and I told somebody else today, I said, he said, you know, they're, they're talking about, like, you know, tax the rich and stuff. I said, Trump didn't get a crown for running for president, did he? He did. He lost his company, or not his company, but he went bankrupt, right? He lost his uh, bunch of investments he had. He His name was tarnished. Um, let's see, he was dieted twice, uh, convicted once. And, you know, they talk about him weaponizing the system. What are they doing right now? I'm yeah. afraid that they'll start weaponizing all these people like Elon Musk, and which he's a person I would not recommend going after. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> you think Trump's bad. Elon may, uh, Elon has the robots on the call. But, mm. uh, <laughs> but there's not a lot of Republican rich people. I, I, you know, I thought about that today. Elon is one billionaire, but there's not a lot of billionaires on the Republican side. And it's awfully funny to me how all the big billionaires are funding Kamala Harris because she's all about taxing the rich. Well, Elon was formerly a Democrat. He was. And now he's with Trump. RFK was formerly a Democrat. Now he's with Trump. Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard was, was formerly yeah. a Democrat and now officially a Republican. Nicole Shanahan, RFK's VP pick, former Democrat, first-time Trump voter. There's a reason, because Kamala Harris has radicalized the left, the Democrat agenda. Democrats were not, like, I remember my mom's mom and dad. They were Democrats, and they were farmers. Yeah. I didn't know this. And she said, well, that's because the Democrat Party over the years has changed. Yeah. Just like just like it was back in the old days. You know, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, freed the slaves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the parties have switched so much, but Biden and Harris have radicalized that part of the country. And, they, and these people are seeing that. And Trump's just over here like, hey, I'm still the same old guy. He may have got God now. Well, I would have God after the events that, that took place a few months ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and from what I've heard, he's, he's now uh, a Christian from what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I mean, if you come that close to your maker, I, I, I wouldn't put it past that. And um, well, it just got with Trump. He, he got an experience now, you know. He came what? I don't even know what what you would call it—a centimeter or an inch. I don't remember what it was, but uh, from dying. So when you come that close to dying, you kind of change your outlook on life a little bit. D Rod, I'm just go on a rant. I apologize. Oh my goodness! I've talked, too, I've talked too much in this podcast, this episode already. But <laughs> when that happened, I heard too many people, and I still hear too many people say that was fake. That was set up. <laughs> a person died. That's... A firefighter died and left what two or three kids behind? Yeah, yeah, family died. That cannot be faked. And and I'm sick and tired of people, oh, it was a Trump fake uh, setup. The man took a bullet to the ear. <laughs> yeah, he did. And then he showed the scar on Joe Rogan. Yeah. And a person died, shot in the head gone and it's because kamala harris and her crapping regime keep titling to him the next hitler he's the next hitler the next stalin he's nowhere near this if anything they're the next hitler and stalin well i don't go into that either because 
I mean, I know, but I'm just sick and tired of hearing it. I understand, but, you know, the same thing can be said. They call Trump Hitler. He's not Hitler. Hitler killed six million people. Kamala Harris isn't Hitler either. I won't call her that. She hasn't killed six million people yet, but, um, you know, it, it's just it, their last bet for the election is to call him Hitler and do all this stuff, which is, you can tell that they have a sense of they're losing, uh, that that's their last bet. And if I'm their campaign manager for Kamala Harris, I would be fired because that's, if you're going to go on some show like The View, which a lot of the Democrats watch, you don't go on there and they ask you a question saying, well, if you were a president, what would you do differently than Joe Biden has done? Well, there ain't nothing that comes to mind right now. I mean, that alone should lose her the election. That alone. And if I was over her campaign, yeah. I would go straight there and I'd say, here's what you need to say, Kamala. This is what I'll do differently. But no, she goes on there. Uh, I can't think of anything I would do differently. So, it is what it is. Well, I just want to say this, you know, I've... I was recently called a white supremacist last week, <laughs> uh, which we you know we've been called a lot of things. That's great. But it's awfully funny that's coming from the party that calls us Nazis. Because, <laughs> D-Rod, you know your history more than anybody that yeah. I know of. Yeah. What were the Nazis before they became the Nazis? Weren't they the National Socialist German Workers or something like that? Well, they evolved into that from that. They evolved later, but they yeah. had the socialist ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and it's funny because that aligns with almost not all. I will, I will not say all mm -hmm. of what the Democrat now agenda is trying to push is a lot of socialist ideas. Yeah, you know, we're conservatives. They're socialist. You know, Kamala Harris' father was a I wouldn't call him a Marxist, but he had the Marxist of uh, ideas about economy and stuff. I mean, Marxism is the gateway to communism. Well, it is. And communism. It is. Um, well, you look at history. Communism doesn't have a very good track record. Never has, never will, because it's just pity, pitiful. Ideology, theology, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's pitiful ideology that doesn't work. It's been proven that it doesn't work in history. And now, they want to give it another go, by all means, but not on my account, you won't give it another go. They want complete control. See, here's another thing. Government people control. People will tell me and you, that because the way we are, the kind of people we are, what kind of positions we hold, we don't need to be talking about things like this. I got news for you. 30 years from now... I want to be able to lay my head on a pillow and go to sleep knowing that I was on the right side of things right now. And that I stood Open up. around in 30 years. Well, that's up to the one upstairs. Um, that is true. Not me or you. Or Kamala. But. Um, <laughs> it may be up there. <laughs> well, there's evil forces at work whether you want to you know, say it or not. I mean. <laughs> I told somebody the other day, and you know the person I'm, I'm going to say, and I ain't going to call his name because once he retires, hopefully we can get him on the podcast. But uh, Oh, um, yeah, go ahead, the great musician. Yeah, I told him, I said, yeah, I'm pretty confident about Tuesday. He said, don't say that ever again. I said, why? He said, there's evil forces at work. That's why you can't be confident. And I said, you're right about that. There are evil forces at work. He's right. But whatever happens tomorrow, I've had, you know. I've had my uncle wanting to get on here, too. <laughs> oh, There's man. a few people that's wanting to get I, on here. We're, we'd get banned so fast. <laughs> I mean, you thought I was bad or D-Rod was bad. Well, I mean, and, and these are ideas that, you know, 
you, you talk to some of these people and I, I you know you want to agree with them but now we live in the day of censorization that you, you got to be in fear of what you say or what you do and it doesn't need to be like that society doesn't need to be like that i we should be having like my uncle on or like the great musician on or or jb uh, mentor on <laughs> we should have these people on uh and be able to express our ideas freely. You know, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, I believe has been watered down for the last 20 years. Well, it has. And, 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 and I feel like when she wins, she'll choke the life of what is left of this country out. And people will stop voting. You know, come 2028, people will stop. You know, she's already talked about, you know, legalizing all the immigrants that's over here now and all the swing states. Uh, it's like I told you, there will only be one party who will rule the majority, just like there is in Britain and stuff. And that is not a country I support or that I won't. And it's sad. It's honestly sad that we witnessed assassination attempt not once, but twice. Yep. Um, it's sad that I never thought I'd see that in my life. It's sad that we're seeing the uh, the the crumbling of an empire. We're too worried about gender ideology ideologies and studies than we are what's going on in the world. We need there needs to be a military police of the world. Otherwise, people go unchecked. And I believe Trump said that the best way he did on Joe Rogan. You know, and he said, little rocket man's people called me, said I had a big red button. And what did Trump say? He said, I've got a bigger button and mine works. <laughs> so we need to be, we need somebody like that to keep people in check. People feared him because he didn't listen to all the puppets talking to him. Yeah. He got stuff done. That's what a president needs to do is get stuff done and you will see this country turn around but i believe him when he says it's going to take a time when he gets if he gets elected tomorrow it's going to take time d rock going to take time it's going to take time and you know i think we'll the see. firings are going to happen bub and i can't wait to see it well there'll be some firings i'm sure uh, <laughs> they won't be just some it'll be a lot <laughs> um <laughs> And now with Trump, you know, funding his own, you know, cabinet moving in, that'd be, that's interesting. And uh, another thing, you know, a lot of this where we've got here today, because people have thrown their Bibles away, and they've been raised that they need to do it a certain way, and now people today are worshiping the devil, they're worshiping pagan gods I got news for you Bubba I got news for everybody listening the devil is choking on the blood at running down the tree if you don't get that reference look it up what does it say in Isaiah you know, 54 think... Leroy Let's see here. Isaiah fifty four seventeen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. A prosper every tongue mm -hmm. that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. Yep. Uh you know, we have a bunch of people with some weird beliefs out there. And you know, I got asked a question by an atheist and and he said, How do we know which religion's right? There's only one religion that tells you that you ain't that you can make it not of works. There's well, only one religion that tells you that's man. written like a history book. One man. There's only one sacrifice. One man. That was ever made. You know, all these other religions, Buddhism, Judaism, all this stuff, you you got to do this, you can't trim your hair. Uh, blah 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 blah. You got to do this to get to heaven. Your riches are paid in heaven. Uh, we're gonna go out here and make blood carvings out of in rocks. Um, I got. I don't care. You can curse me. Do whatever you want to put on me. 
Uh, I don't care. I don't believe in that junk because I've got the power of Christ in me. And I, I'll be the first one to tell you I was once an atheist. I'm proud I'm not no more. Um, if people would sit down and read the Bible like for it is and read it in the context it was written, they might come to the same conclusion I came to. But people don't, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit there and shove it down their throat just like I don't want them to sit there and shove it down my throat. I'm going to tell them how it is. They don't want to hear it. I'm going to move on to the next person. That's just what I believe in, and that's what my book tells me. Dust my sandals off, and I'm going to move on to the next person. You know, the Lord the Lord sometimes gives second chances, but sometimes he don't. Well, you've got, these, I incur- you've got these pagan worshipers. You've got these devil worshipers, atheists, whatever you want to call them, whatever the correct term is nowadays. Um, but at the end of the day, we believe what we believe. And my Bible tells me, in Isaiah fifty four seventeen, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's the word of God. Y'all, if you want me to add a southern twist on it, Colonel Sanders style, since that's uh, what I've been called, apparently. Um, but you also have another uh, add-on to this little thread we're going down here, and that's Christians, people who claim to be Christians. What do they do, Leroy? They twist the scripture. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about it in Sunday school with uh, old mentor. And we've been in Second Peter chapter 3. Um, so I'm going to read a couple of verses here if you don't mind. Because we got to call out those people too. Who use the Bible for their own self-gratification and... You know, they want to, you got these, uh, what did uh, Steve Dees call them? Uh, these New Testament seething Karens who want to knock on your door nowadays and say, hey, why do you got the Trump sign in your yard? That's not biblical. Well, here's some Bible for you on your uh, interpretations of the Bible and what it says about abortion and gays and all this. Let's see, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through, uh, let's see, we'll go through 16. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture. And this will result in their destruction. What does destruction mean, Leroy? Yeah. Yep. So don't twist the Word of God to fit your narrative. It is what it is. Use context. I want to, I want to go back. I want to go back in Second Peter, verse 3. What chapter? Oh, chapter 3. Chapter 3? Chapter 3. Okay. It says, Above all, you must understand that the la- in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. Mm-hmm. They will say, Where is this coming from? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on, and it, and it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of what of that time was deluged and destroyed. There it is again. <laughs> by the same word to present heavens and earth are reserved by fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Hmm. Oh man, this is that second Peter's real, chapter three, very real good. Here's verse nine: The Lord is now slow in keeping His promise, is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's powerful. Yeah, He's not being slow, folks. It's like I told an atheist. I said, He said, Why doesn't God destroy all evil? I said, because he may start with you. <laughs> uh, he may start with me. Thank, he thankfully. may start with... Thankfully, I mean, he's patient. Yeah, but even his patience can run thin. Yeah, 
but I've said it, and it's controversial to say it among, uh, you know, some people, but I said something I heard the other day, and uh, you can't out the grace of God, but that's out, you know, that grace uh, should be a change factor. Uh, grace given to you by God, you can't out the grace of God. That should make you want to change and stop sinning. That's the point. And we, we, we as Christians, we're, it's like we talked about yesterday. You can't ever quit. We're, we're, but we're, you should want to. We're a sinner. We, you know, we, I have my addiction. D-Rod knows him. I'm sure D-Rod's got an addiction. He, he may, may not have told me at all. That's fine. I don't care. It's between him and the Lord. And, we've all got uh, problems. We've all got hang-ups in our, in our Christian walk, you know. Um, even the preacher that came preached yesterday talked about his addictions and anger anger you know lust of the flesh these are all weaknesses that the devil tries to use to a, a newborn christian to destroy them from the path and I, I i i'm thankful that the lord found me where i was and continues to find me where i'm at uh, especially now that we're all fired fired up with this election season you know people who said I don't know how any Christian can vote for her personally. Uh, that's just me. Um, but uh, uh, it's I, you know, I, you know, we we're supposed to separate the two, but this time around, I think it's we're voting not for Donald Trump, but we're voting for what's right. Yeah, yeah, it's not left versus you know what's right. Wrong. It's not left versus no. right. It's what's what you want your country to look like ten years from now. That's what's on the ballot tomorrow. And I I just, I want people to just get out there, vote. You know, not, not, not saying that vote for Trump, but vote for your faith. You know, does your faith really value, align with Kamala Harris's policies? And I know we've gotten off topic, but... What policies? I mean... Yeah, that's that's true. I Only mean, one I've heard is abortion, but I mean, well, that's the thing that she ain't... thinks she can win on. That's that's problematic to me. I mean, it is. It really is. I mean, it's sad. It's very sad to see what's happening now, and it almost bring you to tears just thinking about it because you try to do the right thing, D Rod. You truly do. And try to be positive. Be well, here's smiling. the thing, and I know we're going all over the place here, but it's it's what we do. It's what who we are. Um, you know, we mentioned about people who think a different way, and uh, people who twist the Bible, and people who are atheists. Yeah, I pray for those people. You know, some people may listen to this podcast. Have maybe you know wherever they listen to it. I don't know. A lot of people, from what I hear, do. Who maybe have different opinions. Uh, they may look listen to this podcast and say, Well, them two right there think they're holier than thou. And uh, they think they know everything. How and, far from it. But let me tell you something. I, I'm praying for you. Whoever's listening to this. I, I want you to to get in the Bible and dig in it and find out the truth. And I want you to be happy in life. And I want you to, to know what grace is all about. Because that's that's the ultimate thing in life. Is grace and faith bottom line you know there's really no purpose in life if you think about it if you're an atheist what's the purpose well I've told you this quote and I'll say it again I may have said it on a previous episode if all this that I'm talking about here tonight and on these episodes turns out to be nothing I've wasted my life if you're an atheist and what you believe and you spend your whole life believing that and you turn out to be wrong and I turn out to be right, you've wasted eternity. Amen. So it doesn't hurt to take a shot, folks. Like I did. You know, once you once you get out of that hardened heart and you humble yourself, you'll start realizing real quick. Hey, this is real real cuz I remember when I got saved, D. Rod. I never felt that. I remember turning to you. I said, what just happened? 
Like, I wasn't even there. I wasn't even control no more. That was a supernatural feeling. You don't, you don't get the, you don't get that feeling just by, by becoming overwhelmed or chemicals or nothing. The Holy Ghost touched me that day. Yeah. Something touched me. People tell me it's the Holy Ghost. I believe it was the Holy Ghost, but it was something not of this world. Well, uh, we can turn on the Bill Gaither song. He touched me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. And you know, you know, we may, I may not get that feeling ever again. I have yet to get that feeling ever since then. I mean, but I mean that feeling I got. You know, the devil says, "Well, you're not saved. Why are you believing in that hogwash?" Uh, I believe the good book says it, and I'm going to paraphrase here. Only an idiot says there's no God. <laughs> Uh, and that's just, that's just that's my paraphrasing my 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 literature vocal skills of what that verse says because at the end of the day they tried to do it back in Jesus's time when he was walking out oh well hey we don't believe in this junk what are you talking about yeah well <laughs> they learned out real quick now, I won't say people yeah. who don't believe are idiots but I will say they are misguided oh um, yeah. You know what I mean. I know what you're saying, but they're misguided and mis... Uh, Only a fool yeah. says there's there's no God. Yeah, I understand that. That's what the verse says. But, you know, they, they, they've got a lot going on in the world right now that's twisting their mind. It's easy. Uh, like I said, even Christians can get twisted up. Uh, and sometimes they need to be straightened out. Like I said, they can twist scripture for their own good. And that's maybe what you got a hold of. That may be why some people are atheists. They got a hold of church people. It's easy to do. The world will swallow you up and spit you back out. And that's how it goes. Yeah, the world will and church people will too. But you got to oh, find the right uh, people. I'll be, yeah, you got to find, a, you know, if you say, well, I feel judged. They're just so judgy. I got asked that today. You know, Christians are just so judgy. I said, well, you ain't met my type of Christians, I guess. Yeah. We, we you know, we, we there was an incident where there was gays in our church, right? A long uh, if I were, time ago. Yeah. A long time ago, right? And and what was the, uh, was it Ronnie at, uh, or a pastor at the time? Mm, yeah, yeah. And he got asked what to do, or maybe Jody did. I think it was Jody. The we can't the the church is just a place, okay. But if we shut the doors to the lost, how we how are we winning them for God? If the church is just a meeting place for Christians, you can't. You can't. The church is a people. We're supposed to be winning to God in the back alleys and the byways and the highways. But people, well, they shut their doors to the church, to the lost. I'm not condoning, you know, the homosexuality at all. I disagree with it wholeheartedly. But we tell those people, hey, that's wrong. We don't shun those people. There's a difference. And because they're never going to learn about God and what they're how they're living if they don't know. So... I encourage, uh, now if they continue to live in their homosexuality, that's on them. That's them. Uh, uh, you've done did your work at that point in time. Well, it's like I tell D-Rod all the time, you plant your seed, you tell them how it is, what's right and what's wrong. It, they, they're, they, they're the ones that has to accept it. You can't accept it for them. You're not punching their ticket into heaven. I like thinking of Jesus as like at the, the, uh, Tom Hanks and the Polar Express D-Rod up there with the tickets, punching everybody's ticket. Yeah. You, you ain't punching that ticket for them. <laughs> so, no, you can't punch it for them. You can't offer them some hot chocolate, though. Um, you can't offer them hot chocolate. Though. You know, you can try to compel them to come in. But um, what was I going to... Oh, about the devil thing we was talking about earlier, about the devil and everything, atheists. I'm telling you. And you know this. I guess this will cover our music for the week, because uh, I usually throw in a few music references, um, which I already have. But you know, only good worship listeners will know what I was talking about earlier with the blood and choking on the blood running down the tree. But um, 
Well, so many songs that I've been listening to lately, man. It's just a war. A heaven war cry, man, against the devil. And, you know, torn wells, take it all back, storm the gates of hell. Uh, Joseph Haverdanks, tell the devil that the cross before me, the devil's got to get behind me. And then you got, I hadn't listened to the song until a couple weeks ago. It come out in 2020. Don't tread on me, but we the kingdom. The devil is choking on the blood that's running down the tree. Don't tread on me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm telling you, revival can break out in this country. Revival can break out in these communities if we start telling the devil where he belongs. Get behind us. You're choking on the blood. Power in the blood. Let's have it. Revival or bust time, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, you know, I'm 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 a sinner. I just want to get that out there. D. Rod's a sinner. Person down the road's a sinner. We're all sinners. The only thing me and D. Rod's got is Jesus. We're yeah. a sinner saved by grace, and I love that. I think it's Adam Adam Crab that sings. Uh, We read of a place called heaven. Yeah, heaven. Uh, he how doesn't beautiful really heaven is, must be. How, how, how beautiful heaven must be. That song is so powerful if you just listen to the listen to the lyrics. Uh, and, and I encourage people don't just blurt out the music for a second. Just listen to the lyrics of some of these songs. You know, Jason's got a real good one of "Good Morning Mercy." Yeah. Uh, I, I love the first verse of that song. Where even though I feel far from you, you know, you are always there with me. Yeah. And I believe, you know, I recently moved out on my own. If it wasn't for God, I, I'd probably be at the end of a pistol barrel or something. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, because it was a very depression, but I know I'm not living alone. You know, I yeah. got somebody here protecting me and watching over me and being my friend. Mm -hmm. I may, I may wrong him. I may wrong him, but at the end of the day, he's still my friend. Jesus will never leave you. And once people know, come to know God, that they've never known God before, you'll start realizing and you'll start seeing things. It's almost like blinders removed, D-Rod, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you agree? Like You start seeing life in a different picture once you get saved. And I know I've seen it, and it's always come to my mind, like, hey, man, that's not right. Well, There's something. You know, it's because we get life is what you make it. You know, everybody can mm -hmm. have different paths, but there's only one path that leads to eternity. Eos, and that's Jesus. Eos, and we have yeah. different interests. I'm not saying that you don't need to have different interests. We do, but. There's only one road that you can follow. That leads home. That leads home. <laughs> so, and also, guys, I know we're getting a, into about an hour here in the podcast, uh, and we'll we'll do final comments and then call it quits. But remember, tomorrow is garbage day, not recycling day. Just remember. Hey, we're the garbage. We're the garbage. Though. That's what I'm saying. I'm proud to be garbage. I am too. Well, what we roach, maggots, uh, garbage, uh, white supremacists, neo Nazis, terrorists. domestic terrorists, terrorists, domestic terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. Proud to be garbage. <laughs> Proud. Well, folks, I'm, I, I, we do apologize. I know we ain't had uh, an episode in a while. D-Rod's been busy with his schooling. and Yep. Um, you know, we, we're... I don't know if he's wanting to keep this thing up after tomorrow. Well, we'll he see wins. what happens tomorrow. This may be the last episode for four years, so just hold on. Just keep us in your feeds. 
We'll be back in 2028 to push for J.D. Vance or Ron DeSantis for president. Or Vivek. <clears throat> but I, 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 I feel pretty good. I, I don't know. I, you know, it may come back to bite me afterwards, but I feel pretty good about tomorrow. I do too. We ain't got to worry about Alabama too much, but. <laughs> no, just Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Georgia, and North Carolina. That's about it. <laughs> well, I'm hoping after North Carolina, that hurricane stuff might happen. It may not go down quite her way. But that I may, better shut up. But we'll see. I better shut up. Uh, I've got a scripture. Okay, uh, well, we'll off lead with. us out with scripture. Uh, Proverbs 21 3 do what is right and fair that pleases the Lord more than bringing him sacrifices wow that's good tomorrow's election day folks get garbage out there and vote day. garbage day garbage day is tomorrow it's time to us to take this, this country back you either in or you're out you decide Remember, a vote for Trump is a vote for Peanut. Peanut the squirrel. Don't, and the raccoon. Frank, don't, is it Frank don't the tread raccoon on me. Or something? Yeah, don't tread on me. Just remember, folks, it's your vote. Get out there and do it. Go vote. The final push from the Bama Boys. We'll see you next month or we'll see you in 2028. <laughs> see y'all.